South South Brazil, we have Brazil Black Beer and our city in the province. And there are green city and uh, and the university has about 30,000 students in total. And the population of our city is uh, 400,000 people. Okay, uh, the social aspect of the of the research is first is it's is recognized today that the importance of the quality of the elimination, artificial elimination for the health and the well-being of people. So we are now moving to illumination through LEDs, uh, LID, because of uh, energy consumption and uh, environmental problems with the fluorescent lamps. But still today, uh, we don't have uh, appropriate uh, illumination uh, for our health. For example, we have in our eyes, the glandular cells that are sensitive to blue light, but uh, it's interfered in our uh, circadian regions, but it doesn't have too much contribution to our vision. So it still have a uh, necessity for new material and for uh, special illumination. Uh, for example, uh, uh, some people have to defend that blue light could be used as a to point of the circadian uh, light, but in fact, it's a uh, uh, the circadian rhythm is, uh, is very important for our health. We have some references here that uh, uh, explain this very well. Uh, just for you to have an idea, I have a spectrum here from fluorescent lamps and from LID. And that you can see uh, the way you do LID, you have phosphorescence from a phosphor and the blue, la blue light from from a lab, from the LID uh, used for the excite the phosphor. So you see the intensity in the blue is not appropriate as a, uh, for our eye. Of course, the reference are the sunshine in the, in the earth, which is the spectrum. And also I, I show uh, as a reference a candle that is at least more romantic than the natural, <laughs> the other artificial lighting. Okay, and the second talk uh, is related to the, the mismatch between the solar spectrum with the, the solar cell panel and then also there are some challenges in this uh, area to develop materials for uh, improve the, the efficiency of uh, solar panel. Of course, use the use of glass would be interesting uh, because glass is uh, it's cheaper and it's uh, worldwide used and then you have some advantages and especially when you compare with crystal systems and, and the absorption bands of glasses are wider and then um, you can you, you can cover better the spectrum. So uh, in this in this situation we are talking about solar spectral converter we have slow down conversion process trying to move the, the absorption uh, material to absorb in the visible and transferring this absorption to, to the near infrared where the silicon uh, solar cells are more sensitive and then you can try to improve the efficiency of the solar, the, you know, they use a uh, solar panel. I should say that uh, these two applications are still not available for uh, glass, uh, just pure glass. And uh, still had some uh, work to be done to, to, to make this technology to be available for uh, to be used for this, uh, the, the population. I think it's a, it's a two important subjects, and then I'll try to explain why we, we are doing that. Uh, well, uh, just very fast, uh, when you want to make a, a, the, the LID for artificial illumination, and one way is to do that is to use the well, LID with a phosphor and which should be uh, with a low cost and the commercial ones today basically are made some by single crystals. And of course you can combine different kind of uh, uh, phosphors, but uh, uh, the idea at the end is if, if you could simulate what happened with the sunshine uh, throughout the day uh, inside uh, an environmental uh, where you work or you are, when you are at home uh, to try to, 
to simulate this situation because it usually uh, sunshine in the morning has more blue and uh, in, throughout the day the, the spectrum change. Well, uh, why oxide glass? This is uh, an important point because it is chemically stable, uh, it is of high temperature melting and relatively facile to introduce phosphor ions and also uh, it is uh, can be used in hostile environments. So this is basically oxide glass has this kind of advantages. And of course the ions that should be used for doping, uh, I list some of them, but uh, of course there are more. Well, why the glass we work in the last 30, 35 years, as I said, uh, in fact, the, the aluminum calcium system, uh, it started to be studied from the beginning of the, the last century. Uh, this is, uh, I listed some reference in part here. And after hard work and this composition, which you all see the content, was uh, dominate and uh, uh, it was possible to obtain uh, very high quality optical quality glasses and uh, remove the presence of water molecules that uh, it makes the glass to be transparent in the infrared, right? And also we work uh, in a system making the melting uh, in vacuum system. It's not a high vacuum, but it's 10 to minus 3 to remove water and also all the environment uh, inside the furnace are from graphite, like the resistance, the crucible, uh, all the components are uh, from graphite. And, uh, and also uh, all the process of making the glass is the quenching are made inside the furnace. There is no contact with, uh, with air uh, during the process of uh, preparing the sample. So this uh, glass has a temperature transition of around uh, 850 Celsius, and the temperature of melt is uh, 1600 degrees. Uh, th there are, here there are some properties that uh, justify what, why we have been studied so long this system, because if comparing this first column, uh, like photo energy is very important when you get, you want a material for luminescence. And the, the, the photon energy is, uh, uh, define the, the, the quantum efficiency of the, the rate of luminescence you're going to get. And this material, it, it is intermediate between the uh, fluorides or caucasianite glasses and even phosphates uh, 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 and the silicates. It means uh, this and the phonon energy is, is, is good because when you compare these fluorides and caucasianite, that they are not so strong to support some hostile environment. So this glass uh, has thermoconductivity, uh, which is the highest that uh, it can be find, uh, found in, in glasses, and also the, the hardness, and this, so it's a very good glass. If you see here, there are some photos here, some dopings, which you can observe that all these materials are made of high purity compounds, oxides and uh, the water quality you can see here is, is quite good so it's very important for we have used this glass also to make lasers uh, but uh, in this presentation i'm going to focus only um, white lighting and uh, and solar stuff well uh, the first uh, work we if we look at this glass for white lighting was in this paper in 2009 where by accident we were investigating the cerium uh, in the glass uh, just to try to understand the structure of the glass and we observe uh, the white light uh, emission uh, from the glass and then we start to investigate all the, the spectroscope characteristics of the glass to understand what was going on. What we observe is the, the first thing was the, the way we produce the glass under vacuum atmosphere, uh, we induce serial triplets because usually in oxide glass in the room uh, atmosphere, you will get serial four plus. Serial four plus is something transparent. And the way we got serial triplets, and then we got the absorption bands. You can see two, there are two absorption, main absorption bands here. Uh, in the UV, these are overlapped with the conduction bands. 
And then we were trying to study that and doing the measurements. What we observed was this uh, yellow emission and that you can see in the sample is excited with blue light. You can see the yellow emission. It's not easy to get yellow emission or red emission from glass. Uh, people from this area know that very well. In fact, the red emission is quite complicated. Uh, here we have, um, so how could we combine like a, a LID uh, in the blue or UV and with the yellow emission from the glass to get uh, an ideal white light. An ideal white light, this is a diagram, is this position here is 0 0.33, 33 x and y in the in the chromatograph diagram would be the ideal white light. So what we, we combine this uh, and sample with uh, excitation with a blue light, and then you can see the in the in this figure that the, the emission from the glass is wider uh, compared with the, the crystals and also this is the, 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 the response from the human, human uh, eye function according to the CIE in 1931. We uh, also compared with some other uh, uh, illumination like fluorescent lamp, uh, LID and uh, incandescent lamp uh, we got some good matching between the, the spectrum from the glass and uh, compared to the human uh, dysfunction uh, of the, the circadian rhythms. Now, this class also has another important aspect that depending on the position you excite, oh, sorry, depending on the position you excite, uh, you get the shifting uh, from the, the emission. You can see here the yellow curve. The center is in really in the yellow to the, the region, which we didn't find in the literature. No, no glass that could have this kind of emission in, in the yellow uh, region of the spectrum. Uh, why, uh, at that time, we tried to understand why this glass has this yellow emission compared with the other glass that doesn't have it. We, we, after our own measurements, uh, we understand that the structure of this glass is not look like a garnet crystals, uh, but it's, a, of course, it's a morpho system. And then uh, the, the structure may explain why we have uh, uh, this glass uh, emitting in the, in the yellow and sometimes the red region. Here we have our own uh, data compared with the glass with ceramics. This is the blue pure. So it means the, the phonon energy of this glass is around 850 nanometer. And this structure may be uh, the reason why we have this kind of energy. Then, of course, uh, we try to understand uh, better uh, the, the rule of the glass composition in terms of the doping. We prepare, we try to use europium because europium is, is also an important uh, ion to get uh, luminescence. We change the glass composition from 7% of uh, silicon up to 65% of silicon. You can see here that uh, although the, we produce European 2 plus, that it's important for emission divisible, uh, but the emission shifts to the, to the, the blue uh, region uh, when the concentration of, uh, of silicon is increased up to 65%. This 7% is this uh, yellow emission here. And also we did magnetic resonance, uh, electromagnetic resonance to, to show that the, the silica composition uh, uh, controls the, the, the oxidation state of uh, uh, Europe and uh, uh, 2 and 3 plus. Uh, we also, of course, uh, mix the then Europe with cerium. In this paper, we showed that uh, we could uh, try to, to get better information, uh, better advantage you mix in the absorption bands from European uh, 3 plus and European 2 plus and also cerium 3 plus and 4 plus to get a uh, good spectrum. And we have, of course, the energy levels here explained. The, this is discussed in this paper. Uh, you can see here when you get only European in the low silicon uh, glass. Uh, only a uh, cerium and doping, 
And then you put both dopings uh, with appropriate composition, concentration. You can see here uh, uh, an improvement in the, in the emission in the red and yellow region. This is very important, as I said in the beginning, it's very difficult to get uh, material to get good emission in the yellow and especially in the red uh, region of the spectrum. Uh, of course, here there is a, a we use the lead change from the excitation to 370 to 450 nanometer, and to get how the temperature uh, of the the, the plankton temperature CCP uh, from the emission we can have. So we can sh uh, move from 306,000 uh, Kelvin up to 520, 200 Kelvin of the emission of the of the glass. Uh, we also use uh, the recent paper, this paper will go, it's already available online, but it's going to appear next year, 2021. We use the titanium uh, in Europe. We observe that uh, we can have titanium 3 and titanium 4, and Europe 2 and Europe 3 in our glass. And then we could open the sample, we observe that the absorption is visible is very uh, high, so we can use the LEDs to excite the samples here and then to get the, the emission, the whole visible. That's the idea, to get the whole spectrum and try to simulate the sunshine uh, emission. Uh, you see this, uh, this is uh, the color of the glass, it's very nice color. And also this is the spectral emission from about 400 nanometer and to 700 nanometer. This is a very important result because when you use crystal, you have you cannot block the blue emission as I showed in the beginning, uh, because the the, the YAG, the light YAG, for example, they transmit a lot of uh, the blue light. Glass, uh, depending on the composition you use of the doping, you can control the emission in the blue, and then you get a more uh, safety uh, spectrum for the eye and for the, the vision in terms of the ideal white light. Um, so, um, this is the, the data from this paper. Uh, I just select this graph again to show you. And then, the, the, again, the, 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 the chromatogram of, the, uh, of the, the response. And then, in this glass, we measure the quantum efficiency with a, a thermal technique. We also, all the time we make this glass, we make characterization, we use the conventional luminescence techniques and also photothermal techniques because we evaluate the, the efficiency of the, the quantum efficiency of the material. It's very important for, uh, for the application if you have a very efficient material in terms of luminescence. In this case, we we measure the, the quantum efficiency of around 40%. And then uh, also uh, the, 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 the CCT temperature and the UV uh, are according, uh, the UV number we get in this glass, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's uh, inside of what is predicted by the Japanese uh, norm of uh, regulation of uh, illumination quality. Uh, here, uh, there is, uh, we put a picture, uh, change the power of the LED, and then we can, we can tune the, the, the spectrum we are going to have. So this is a very important if you want to get a, what is called a smart white light. It means you could have a, a light uh, that could be tuned uh, automatically throughout the day, for example, to get a spectrum with a little bit more blue in the morning, and then change it during the day to that uh, uh, as it is uh, with the sunshine uh, in the you know in our surface in the earth lab. Now the second uh, area spectral converter for the solar cells, as I said before, that, uh, there is a mismatch between the solar spec to the, the the silicon solar cell, and then we are trying to to get this material with doping using the idea uh, of uh, uh, I, uh, one ion that absorbs uh, uh, with a high absorption coefficient in the visible region where the, the sunshine has the most uh, intense radiation 
and then through a down conversion process, transfer the energy to Ethereum that the emission from the Ethereum 3 plus exactly is the maximum where the, the silicon band gap uh, works. So it could improve uh, the emission, uh, the efficiency of photovoltaic itself. This is a, a very recent subject. And, uh, there is a lot of research in this direction trying to get some material. For example, we did this work, it's already published this paper, where we show that we can convert uh, 155%, it means uh, one photon divisible can generate 1.5 photon in the near infrared. Of, so this is the done conversion process with an efficiency of 75% of the, this glass. The important aspect of the glass to, to show this is because of the phonon energy, as I said before, and secondly, uh, the, the, the melting procedure of removing the water from the camera, which the water is a very problem uh, when you get emission in the infrared. So we remove the water, we, we were able to get this, uh, you can see here, with, with a sample with 4% of uh, doping of ethereum and 1% of neodymium, we can get a, a, this kind of efficiency. It's a very uh, uh, promising result. And the second one, uh, okay, uh, here we measure uh, how efficient was the, 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 dope, the cold doping system to make, to have energy transfer process. It's very nice results because using the thermal mirror technique, we also work with this. Uh, you can see the sample, when you start to cold dope the sample, the heat generation is lower than when you have just the neodymium as a doping. It means that you are favoring the, trans the energy transfer between neodymium to ethereum, and that's why the emission in the, in the silicon band gap is so high. And the second system, uh, we cold dope this glass with ethereum and, uh, and erbium again. And then again, we got uh, this uh, high efficiency uh, transfer and energy transfer. You can see the spectrum here. This is also published in this paper. Um, here is uh, the energy transfer process. You see, you pump the third indivisible, and then you transfer uh, to the air beam, uh, in the infrared, which means, which means you have emission of two pots. It's the same as uh, before uh, for the neodymium. The idea is that you excite the visible and then you have an energy transfer and, and mechanism and then at the end you get two photons emitted in the, in the, in the infrared. This is the non conversion process. Uh, getting one, phot one photon divisible and converting it in two photons in the infrared where the one gap of the silicon is uh, supposed to have. Uh, Second, uh, we also uh, have an example which didn't work when you try to use to, to as a sensitizer to transfer energy to ethereum. In this case, we saw a lot of back energy transfer process. And it means here, you see, there is no efficiency. So prazogen is not a good system uh, to, to be used in this, in this glass. And finally, the system, uh, uh, this paper is still under, uh, is, it is under review, so I'm not going to show the detail of the result, but it's, we are combining here uh, Europa 2 plus and 3 plus with Ethereum, because Europa 3, 2 plus uh, has a very strong uh, absorption coefficient in the visible. So if you can make it a uh, down conversion process with Ethereum, we have uh, an efficient system to absorb the visible and then to transfer to the, the infrared. Uh, this, is the, this is the way we are uh, putting the sun in the silicon solar cell and then the coupling, then we can make, a, a, we call it the hybrid solar cell. It's a, it's a photovoltaic measurement and uh, this is the way just for to understand how the application of this system could be. Uh, of course, there is another advantage of the system because if you when you use this kind of doping in glass, the the glass itself would block the UV radiation. That is no to very it is very important to degrade the, the the silicon solar cell. So the glass could work as a sensitizer for down conversion process, but in the same time could be used as a, to protect the, the, the solar panel 
um, against the degradation for UV radiation. So I'm going to, to conclude. Um, the, the low silica glass was uh, efficient to get yellow emission, different from other glass we know. Uh, the circadian rhythm was, uh, we were able to simulate uh, the emission uh, similar to the, the eye response for the human being. The emissions are broader than crystals for all the dopings we used. Uh, it has a disordered structure. Uh, when we use the European system, we, we evaluate the silica content influence on the emission. And so this is, uh, this glass we think it's a uh, candidate for uh, smart white light and spectral convert. Uh, there, uh, here I, I put a picture for some people that is very important for our project. I'm going to name, not name them, but it's, uh, it will be in the internet, they can send themselves. Also other people that we have our team from French University in Brazil, from in France, Professor Boulogne, and Professor, Professor Guyot, from Germany, Professor Dominique Levine, and also our previous uh, post-PhD and, and postdoc students, which uh, some of them are uh, working in other universities throughout Brazil. So thank you, we would like also to, to, to acknowledge our partners, like this company of energy of our province, which is financing the project, the National Agency of uh, Electrical Energy, and also, of course, our uh, official um, uh, agency funding research in Brazil. Thank you very much. Uh,